Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the origins of complex life on our planet and also some really cool viruses. Really unexpected viruses that were discovered only a few months ago. So let's talk a little bit more about what all of this means and let's discuss this idea of the origin of complexity of life. But first of all, a quick biology reminder. What do we mean by the complexity of life? All of the complex life on our planet, including of course ourselves, can generally be described as eukaryotes, which refers to the types of the cells that the actual organisms are made from. Whereas the more primitive organisms, such as bacteria and archaea, are known as prokaryotes. So essentially you could divide life into either being prokaryote or ancient life, or eukaryote or more advanced and more recent life. And for the most part, the difference between them is actually structural. The more advanced eukaryote life, in other words us, usually possesses a lot of so-called organelles or smaller organized structures inside the cell, each of which is responsible for some sort of a function. The prokaryotes on the other hand, so bacteria in this case, are generally much simpler and, for example, their DNA just kind of floats around inside the cytoplasm of the cell, inside the cell's liquid. And so the structural simplicity is what really defines the main difference between these cells. But because of this, for many years, scientists believed that eukaryotes most likely evolved from prokaryotes. In other words, the complexity of the cell and all of these organelles was the result of the evolution of the much simpler ancient bacteria. And the main theory suggests that through millions of years of evolution, the really simple initial eukaryote, which most likely only possessed nucleus and not much else, slowly started to acquire other bacteria that eventually turned into organelles like mitochondria. So in other words, every little part inside the typical eukaryotic cell is a small bacteria that evolved to be part of the cell itself. Now there's not a lot of proof of this and there's actually not a lot of evidence to suggest this, but we have discovered simpler bacteria that do actually possess very similar features and very similar functions to typical organelles inside our cells. But that's not really what we're talking about in this video, because that's not really a new discovery. If you look at this image again, and if you scroll all the way to the top here, you'll discover that even the initial cell here already seems to possess nucleus. But we know that none of the ancient bacteria, none of the archaea or any other bacteria we have today have nuclei. They don't have this large organelle inside of the cell specifically for the storage of DNA. Only our cells have this. Only the more advanced life on the planet has these structures. But how these structures came to be and what created them has always really been a mystery. Actually, up until I think 2019, this was a really, really big mystery that nobody could answer. But we started to discover a few hints here and there. And a lot of these hints came from things that we kind of didn't expect to be the answer. Viruses. In the last few years, we've discovered a lot of really amazing viruses. And here the word amazing kind of doesn't do them justice. Like for example, about 10 years ago, we've discovered this unusual virus, very large virus, known as giant virus. And the giant virus is essentially almost a bacteria, in a sense that it can produce approximately 400 different proteins, way more than any other virus, and only a little bit less than a typical bacteria. Also, only a few months ago, in 2020, the scientists in Brazil discovered Yara virus, the virus that seems to contain genes that are exceptionally different from anything else on the planet, as if it came from some other planet. It's a strange virus, it seems to make no sense, but that's sort of also the opposite of what we're going to be talking about, but this is just to give you an idea that we've been discovering a lot of incredible viruses, and a lot of them seem to connect to life as we know it. As a matter of fact, one of the previous videos that you can find somewhere above my head talks about how viruses were absolutely crucial to the evolution of life on the planet. For example, viruses, or the so-called endogenous retroviruses, are crucial for the development of human fetuses during pregnancy. So this is something that we only have been discovering in the last few years. But turns out that viruses seem to have even more importance than what we were giving them credit for. In other words, we may have discovered something else about them that makes them absolutely mandatory for the evolution of life. About 20 years ago, back in 2001, scientists discovered that the famous pox viruses, for example, things like chickenpox, smallpox, and so on, 
possess very similar ability to the giant virus. They seem to be able to take their own genetic material and clump it into tiny pieces, separating them into tiny compartments very similar to how it's done in a eukaryotic cell. But something that bacteria or the prokaryotic cells are not able to do at all. And what this suggested to the scientists is that maybe once upon a time a prokaryotic cell got infected by something similar to a pox virus which eventually led to the DNA transfer from one to another. Essentially they kind of exchange genes, one acquiring the other's genes. And eventually the prokaryotic cells may have acquired these genes responsible for creating the nucleus. But this wasn't really enough proof just yet. There were still a lot of things missing and a lot of things misunderstood. And that's until the recent discovery from the Japanese scientists that found yet another very unusual virus they refer to as the Medusa virus. For one simple reason. Apparently this virus, when infecting its hosts, which in this case are the very common amoeba, which are very simple eukaryotic cells, then turns them hard on the outside. Or it essentially turns amoeba hard on the outside, kind of similar to how Medusa did it in the legends from Greek mythology. And what they discovered inside the Medusa virus is that it's able to produce what's known as histones, an extremely important protein inside of a nucleus of a typical uh, eukaryotic cell, whose only purpose is to take DNA and then kind of fold it very accurately into tinier and tinier pieces until it becomes a chromosome. In other words, histones are responsible for turning DNA strands into the shapes we're familiar with. Both the X and the Y chromosomes in humans are packed using these histones that we've always believed to be present only in eukaryotes. But at the same time, we never had any idea where they came from. And what this study discovered and what it implies is that it all came from viruses. Very old viruses that infected ancient cells exchanging DNA with them and eventually leading to the creation of the nucleus that we know in cells today. And what makes Medusa virus very unique and a very exciting discovery in biology and also what makes this a candidate for possibly creating the nucleus in early cells is the fact that it only seems to produce itself or in other words it only seems to reproduce inside the nucleus and not in the cytoplasm of the cell. Most viruses or actually all other viruses we know of they're totally okay reproducing inside the entire cell. But this virus only goes inside the nucleus and it stays there until its job is done. And by then the cell becomes solidified and becomes kind of like a solid piece of rock. So this is exactly what makes this particular virus a very unique finding an extremely important piece to the puzzle of the evolution of all cells on earth. And most importantly it once again underlines how important viruses are, were and probably will be in the evolution of life on our planet. It seems that pretty much all of the cells and all of the life on the planet depends on this kind of a very strange symbiotic relationship where one of the objects needs to die for other objects to acquire something better. So in other words, it's a strange relationship that we're still trying to understand and we've only been learning about it in the last few years or so. So this is probably going to create a completely new and very very exciting field of biology that we're going to be learning about for the next few decades. And most importantly, once we are able to find some kind of a life somewhere else, like for example Venus, we'll actually have a lot of new discoveries and a lot of new comparison studies trying to figure out how life evolves on other planets, around other stars and in other parts of the universe. But I guess until we make more discoveries in regards to viruses or other really cool biological discoveries, that's all I wanted to mention in the video. The paper, as always, is in the description below and it's a pretty exciting paper to read so do check it out and it's actually free, you don't have to pay for anything. And when we discover something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with another exciting video. On that note, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful present t-shirt because it does help me quite a lot. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.